got uh, what I got, okay? First of all, I've already done some automatic stuff. I've done the free by diagram, normal force. Why is it going that way? Because it's perpendicular to the surface, okay? So it should be going like that, where the angle here should be a 90 degrees, so going up like that. So there's the normal force. Weight, okay? Weight always goes straight down, down. down okay? And the weight is m times g. The mass of the object was 10, so our new gravity is 9.8. Now remember, we have a rotated xy axis, okay? So does a positive or negative mean anything on the weight? No, it doesn't. Well, the components of the weight have a sign. Yeah. Yes, because they'll be along the x or y axis, okay? So that's why I don't have a negative here. If you put a negative here, I won't mark it wrong. Uh, and it won't really mess up your problem, but just be aware that that's a finer point, but it, it's 98 newtons at some crazy angle, okay? All right, because uh, the x-y axis looks like this, okay? The x-y axis looks like this, the weight's between them, okay? All right, this was all given in the problem, this is for the video, and we're looking for the acceleration in the x-direction. Since we're given both coefficients, it's a will it move problem, okay? So I've got my weight, next thing I do automatically, my free by diagram, next thing I do is calculate my components, can somebody tell me that was in degree mode? What's 98 newtons times the sine of 70? 75 point what? 84. 84. So call it 75.8 newtons, and we'll make that negative. <coughs> Why am I making that negative? The weight is between the x and y axis. So the x part is going down the incline, the y part's going like that. So there's my right triangle. I'm going to erase that. We don't need that on here. But you can see the x is going down the incline. All right, and then what about the y component? Who told me the last one? What is it? It's 92. Oh. Are you in degree mode for sure? Yes. Yeah, most of it should be in the x, so negative 92? Yeah. We got some nods? Okay, thank you. And what about the uh, y component? 33.52. We'll just call it 33.5. And we'll make both of those negative. Remember, you have to add the sign on the inclined plane problems, even doing it my trick slash automatic way. Okay? Uh, and you did use, yeah, let's see, it should be 70 degrees, so most of the weight should be in the x direction. It does make sense. Okay? All right, so now at this point, we've got to ask ourselves, we haven't done an inclined plane problem like this yet, but we have to ask ourselves, do we overcome static friction? So we have to make a comparison between force of friction, static max, the size of that. Okay. Oh, whoop. my free body diagram, what did I forget? Force of friction. Force of friction. Uh, which way is the block going to try to move? Down. Down. So which way is friction going to go? Uh -huh. Up. I can't believe nobody pointed that out, but there we go. And we don't know what kind, so for now I'll just put a question mark. Okay. So friction's going up the incline. Okay. If we're going to move it down the incline, normally before we were comparing like what you have to push with. Well, what is what force is going down the incline? What's the force that's trying to make the object go down the hill? The force of the weight. The force of the weight we need more than that. In the x direction. So we're going to make a comparison between the force of friction static max and the weight in the x direction. If the weight in the x direction is bigger, the object <coughs> will move. If static max is bigger, the object will not move or stay put. Questions on why we're going to be comparing these two, because that's the new thing. We're okay with that? All right. Then let's go ahead and calculate. We already have this number. Let's calculate force of friction static max. That equals mu sub s times the normal force. We have mu sub s. Do we have the normal force yet? Nope. So what do we do to get the normal force? That's in the y direction, so we sum the forces in the y. y direction. And they'll be equal to zero. If you want to start writing zero at that step now, you can. I'm fine with that. So we'll have normal plus weight in the, is it the entire weight that's in the y direction? Nope, nope it's just the y component. Equals zero. So our normal force <coughs> will equal, what was our weight in the y? What was it? Negative 33.5, so we'll get 33.5 newtons. I just did that in my head, and that's fine at this point. As long as you have these two lines, you get the right answer, we're all set. Okay, so 33.5 newtons. Now I can calculate static max. It'd be mu sub s, 0.2, times 33.5 newtons. Somebody get what is that number? Uh, 6.35? 
All right, and which way is friction going? It's going up, so it's positive. So I leave the sign alone, but it doesn't matter because I'm doing a comparison. Which one of these is bigger? By far, weight in the X. So it moves. On one of these problems, you have to have this with the numbers clearly stated. Okay, there it is, 92. 92 is greater than 6.35, therefore it moves. Now we're not done. What? 6.7. 6.7? I thought it'd be really close to 7. 6.7? Okay, thank you. Yes? Why do we compare to the weight? Okay. What's trying to make this thing go downhill? Remember, the hill's like this. What's trying to make the thing go down the hill? Friction. No, friction's going to keep it from moving. So the object's going to try to go down the hill, so friction will go oh, up. up the hill, right? So there's my force of friction. Yeah. What's the only force that is going along the hill besides friction? Or part of a force? Okay. The weight in the x direction. So the thing that's trying to make it go down the hill is the x component of the weight. The thing that's trying to keep it from doing that is force of friction static max. So instead of somebody pushing on it to get it to move, it's the weight in the x component that's pulling on it trying to get it to move down the hill. Mm -hmm. So if we got more weight in the x than we do friction max, it's going to move. Is that okay? All right, because this is the key to why we did the comparison. Okay? All right. Before I get rid of that and do the acceleration part, are there questions? Everybody's okay with why we compared these? Because I can draw some stuff to show it to you. Okay. All right, then I'm going to get rid of the middle part. And now we're going to sum the forces in the x direction. Now that we know it's moving, I can change the question mark to a what up here? Okay, I heard somebody whisper it. <laughs> uh, sum the forces in the x equals mass times acceleration in the x. Look at your free body diagram. We've got kinetic friction and the x component of the weight. equals max. Okay. We already know what this is. We know what m is. Did we calculate kinetic friction yet? Nope. So we need to do that. That's just some scratch work. I'll do it down here. Force of friction kinetic equals mu sub k times the normal, which will equal 0.1 times 33.5 newtons. So friction will be 3.35 newtons. And we got to remember, we have to add the sign. Okay. In this case, friction is going in the positive direction, so I can just leave that alone. I don't got to add a. I don't need. I don't need to add a ne negative. So now we plug in 3.35 newtons. Weight in the x minus 92 newtons equals the mass, which was 10 kilograms, times the acceleration. Do the algebra. What's this minus this divided by 10? I have no idea. I guess I could do it in my head, but I don't want to. What'd you get? Negative 8.21. Negative 8.21. Alright, and you just did this just now? Okay. Alright, let's talk about this result. First of all, should it be negative? No more. That's wrong. That's wrong. Okay. It should, it should, it should be something in the 8 range, right? Negative 8.7. Negative 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. what? 8.7. 8. 8.7? Okay. It should be something. It should be between 8 and 9. Okay. Because this is going to be in the 80s, divided by 10 is going to be in the 80s. All right, so negative 8.7 meter per second squared. First of all, does the negative make sense? And this is a really important step. Some of you will lose a lot of points because you're writing an answer here that proves that you know nothing. If you get to this last step and you prove you know nothing about what's going on, guess what I'm going to give you on the question? Zero, okay? Unless you give a little explanation. I'll give you an example in a minute, but we, this is right. So first of all, does the negative make sense? Yes, okay? Because would an object sitting on a hill with nobody pushing on it go uphill somehow miraculously? No, it wouldn't, right? So if you get a positive answer for acceleration here, that means you did something wrong in the algebra, right? Or you have a sign wrong because things aren't going to slide uphill. They don't do that. They slide downhill, okay? Also, notice this number is less than what? Imagine for a minute there was no friction and we were on an incline and we just had something falling through the air. What's the best acceleration we can do? 9.8 meters per second squared. So if you ever get a positive answer for one that's set up like this or a number bigger than 9.8 and you leave it like that, like you get an answer of like negative 12.3 and that's your answer uh, and there's no one pushing on it. There's no one pushing on it. This proves you know nothing. Okay? Why? If you take away friction, okay, it's still going to be less than 9.8. If, if you make the angle 90 degrees, you take this, instead of 70, you make it 90. You're in free fall. So the best you can do is 9.8 down. Okay? So this doesn't make any sense, and positive 8.7 doesn't make any sense. Okay? 
Uh, 